He will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is stayed upon thee. You know, when I think of peace, I think of that old great hymn of the church, It Is Well With My Soul. Do you remember that one? Man, what a, what a beautiful song. And the reason why so many people throughout history of the church have loved that song is because of its message. Remember one of the verses says, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Yeah, you sing well. You know that song. It's very comforting, especially when it's chaotic or when you've been going through something that's been unsettling. The song, to me, portrays such strength, such, such a trust, a steadfast trust. But the song has really become famous more so for the story behind the song rather than just the words. It's been revered because of the story. This song wasn't written by a famous a singer, songwriter, composer, musician, or even a preacher. This song was written by a businessman named Horatio Spafford in 1873. Horatio and his wife had already lost one child to pneumonia. They decided to have more children. They had four beautiful daughters. As the family grew up, uh, Horatio had built a big business and he was very successful and, and wealthy and he decided that the family should take a vacation in Europe. So he sent his wife and his four daughters onto this ship to cross the, the dangerous Atlantic Ocean to go to Europe and he had to wrap up some business in the States and he'd eventually meet them over there. Well, little did he know that on this journey, the waves would be, sea billows would be rolling and uh, midway through the trip, the ship capsized, and all four of his daughters passed away at sea. Miraculously, his wife survived, and it took weeks before word got back to Horatio that his wife was alive, but his four daughters had been lost at sea. Can you imagine that? I mean, you know, we have instant messenger, we have cell phones. The, even, the telegraph back then wasn't even that sophisticated. But word eventually got to Horatio. He got on the first ship the next day that would take him to Europe so he could meet up with his wife. When he was on that journey back to meet up with his wife, he told the captain, he said, could you tell me approximately where it was that the ship capsized? And so as they got to that part of the journey, the captain very reverently and mournfully said, sir, this is where the ship capsized. And it's at that moment, a businessman who was grieving and mourning, maybe even confused, wrote those words. Maybe as the ship was riding on those billows where he wrote, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Can you imagine the emotion? How would you handle that? You see, what makes this song so powerful is that it was, it was these painful circumstances that he faced. Th these words weren't written by someone who was enjoying an easy life. It is well with my soul. No. This was written out of the pain, out of a deep, authentic peace that he had found quiet in the midst of chaos. You see, sometimes when we think of peace, we often think of absence of hardship, absence of trouble or violence and fear. But as this hymn so beautifully captures, the journey of peace is not immune from those things. In fact, they are central to the story. Some of the greatest songs were written during the greatest pain and sorrow. See, God just doesn't bring peace. The Bible says He is the Prince of Peace. The inner and outer chaos, anxiety, fear, difficulty, the busyness may not change, but we can experience a peace when we know the one who is 
peace. Some of the greatest songs were written out of difficult times. And I would believe tonight that there is a room full of people tonight who are unknown, undiscovered songwriters. But what are you writing? What will you write? It is well with my soul regardless of what I've been through in the last couple years. Or I am bitter. I'm confused. I've lost hope. I pray that this Christmas season you would find quiet in the chaos. You would find the King of Kings. You'd find the one who is peace. And you'll find that that quiet in the chaos. Peace is not the absence of trouble, but peace is the presence of God. Do you have the presence of God within you, or are you just doing the best that you can with what you got? And you come to seasons like we've faced as a nation, as a, as a country, and you just have lost hope. I want you to find the Prince of Peace once again and allow His presence to fill you even tonight.